right, in this section, we're going to learn about a new distribution called the t distribution. So the z-score equation for the sampling distribution of the sample mean was z equals x bar minus mu over sigma divided by the square root of n. This equation relies on us being able to know the population mean and the population standard deviation. And in a lot of cases, we might be able to know the mean or we will be able to know the mean, but it's going to be a lot harder, probably impossible for us to find what the population standard deviation is. So to compensate for this, we can use the standard deviation from our sample, but it's going to change the distribution. It's no longer going to be considered a normal distribution. It's going to turn it into a T distribution. Now a T distribution is very similar to a Z distribution or a normal distribution. Um, we can calculate how far away from the mean we are using a t-score. So that's technically called the student's t-distribution, but we just shorthand it to t-distribution because we do that all the time in statistics. We don't like calling things by their full name. So if we take a simple random sample of size n from a population, the t-score, which is going to tell us how far away from the mean we are, similar to how a z-score works, is found by t equals x bar minus mu um, over s over the square root of n. So now this s is the sample standard deviation. So all I've done in this formula is replaced the population standard deviation from above sigma with the sample standard deviation. And that one little switch changes the distribution from a normal to a t. Otherwise, the distributions are fairly similar. They are both bell curves. So a normal distribution we've seen over and over and over again, it's a bell curve. The T distribution is also a bell curve. But the T distribution changes depending on the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom, shorthanded as DF and calculated by taking your sample size minus one. Yes, there is a very good reason why it is a sample size minus one. No, I don't remember what it is, but if you are curious, I can look it up and we can talk about it during office hours. So the T distribution will change slightly depending on your degrees of freedom. So it will always be bell shaped, but the spread of that bell shape will change depending on how large your sample is. If you have a smaller sample, the bell shape is going to be more spread and more squished. Whereas if you have a larger sample, it's not going to be as squished. And eventually, the T distribution ends up looking identical to a normal distribution if you have a large enough sample size. Otherwise, it's pretty similar. The T distribution is centered and symmetric at zero. Remember, zero is the Z score or now T score for the mean. If you're at the mean, then your T score is zero. The entire area under the curve is one, so we can interpret that area like probability, just like we did with the normal curve. And then I just stated this, but we'll say it again. As the sample size increases, the T distribution gets closer and closer to the normal distribution. This occurs because as N increases, the sample standard deviation gets closer to the population standard deviation by the law of large numbers. And if you recall, we were introduced to the law of large numbers back at the beginning of probability. And it stated that if you continue to do a probability experiment over and over and over and over again, the results from your experiment 
would eventually get closer and closer and closer to the results that you would expect to see just by thinking about the counting methods. So this is true as well. If you continue to take a larger and larger sample, eventually you're going to be sampling a sample size that is closer to the entire population. So the sample standard deviation is going to get closer to what that population standard deviation would be because you're sampling closer to what the population size is. So this is the T distribution. It is very similar. We just have one more thing we have to think about, which is this degrees of freedom here. I'm going to box it now. Degrees of freedom. And it's calculated by taking our sample size minus one. But again, we're going to let technology do all of this work for us as far as finding those probabilities and all of that stuff. So that is this new T distribution, still bell-shaped, still all that fun probability stuff.